All right, Bob, we are live. It's game day. How's it going? It's going great, Greg. Uh, we are actually in the ride along video for Michigan week. We're actually leaving my house. That's right. At an undisclosed location in the city of Harrisburg. It's a lot, it's a lot like the Batcave. Right. Like I only let a couple people know where I live just for security reasons. Sure. And it's working out well for me. But yeah, we are just literally starting our way up to State College. What a event we have uh, to cover and yes. to look forward to. Penn State, Michigan, 7.30 in a couple hours. I'm pretty excited. I gotta say, the first thing I just wanted to say to you is the weather Perfect. is conducive yes. to the Penn State fan base getting after it uh, from early in the morning up through kickoff and after the game. Phenomenal. I don't think anyone anywhere's having any fun in this weather. Phenomenal weather no day chance. here in in late October for this game. I remember the uh, the Ohio State upset last year. Yeah. As great an event as that was, it was pretty cold. Right. And they were still in the parking lots at 8:30 in the morning. Yep. Uh, you know, just just having a great time. So I'm sure Everyone's probably enjoying themselves. I don't know how many people are watching us, but we're going to make the best of it. That's right. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your bye week as much as you could. Absolutely. You as well, Bob. And uh, I did. Believe me, I did. I was. Uh, <laughs> I think I was more tired at the end of the bye week than I was <laughs> at the end of Penn State covered duties, but that was yes. in a good way. So let's talk about a couple things with this game uh, before we get to our Sunday plans if we survive them. <laughs> what 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 really jumps out to you? From the from the start of the week to the to the finish of the week, as far as how this thing is shaping up, maybe line moves, yeah. anything strike your fancy? <laughs> yeah, it does. The fact that Michigan money keeps pouring in just really has surprised me, Bob. It's down to eight. It is. Yeah. Penn State is down to an eight point favorite. It opened, I think, at twelve and a half. It quickly got decked to ten, and now it sits at eight. But the total hasn't moved. I could see the line movement if the total moved in unison with it. People thinking low scoring, maybe 10-6, 14-10. six, fourteen, <laughs> ten, ten, six. You know, six four. Maybe. What is the total? Forty-five. Uh, it's still yeah. It's forty-three right now. That's okay. Look. So uh, the total staying pretty firm though. But the, the fact that I think people are seeing this one as low scoring. Yeah. You know Desmond Howard picked twenty-seven, twenty-four. I don't think that many points are getting scored in this one. I could be wrong, but this is a game of two defenses, man. There's no question about that. Well, Lee Corso, I believe, picked Penn State. Did Desmond Desmond pick Penn State or he Michigan? Michigan. He was Did the he? Only, we picked the Wolverines. Yes. I mean, 24. he can't not pick Michigan. Right. Right. It's getting to the point where he might as well just not. Like Herb Street like Herb won't Street, pick. Yeah, right. He won't pick the games that he covers. Desmond Wise will not pick whenever they bring the Michigan game. <laughs> yeah. Just don't pick it because it's right. not realistic. No. Like even if he thinks they're going to lose, right? Not He'll get a raft of crap. Yes, uh, and it's just not worth it for him. So I think it takes away from kind of the sincerity of uh, of the, the the game day prognostication experience. But yes. for me, I the just fact more, that. Almost, I don't know that I've, other than Desmond, I don't know that anyone is really picking Michigan. A lot of people think it's going to be a game, and it, and right. it obviously could be. I, I mean, I think Michigan could certainly win the game, but when I get down to it, I just think of, how, so how, how do you make Penn State uncomfortable at home? Like, what is the scenario that will make them uncomfortable? Michigan could get up 10 nothing. Yep. You know, I don't know that that will happen, but if they would get up, say, 10 nothing. You know, Penn State, even though they're playing against a good defense, I still feel like that does not discourage no. Penn State. But you can, I think you can make Michigan uncomfortable. And the way you do it is, if Penn State gets up 10-0, um, you, if you have to, if you make this Michigan offense work for their points yep. and make take them out of what they want to do a little bit, I just don't know how well they can adapt. I think you saw that. When they, I know their weather was bad, but when Michigan State got up on them, right, they didn't really have an answer. Now maybe O'Corn and John O'Corn will get better as the season goes on, and maybe some of these young receivers. There, there have been a couple of plays I've noticed in Michigan games where they've they've just missed. Like right. in the Michigan State game, they had a receiver open across the field for a touchdown. He just, they just missed him. He just overthrew him. <clears throat> right. But I just think the margin for error for Michigan is so slight. I do feel though, um, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm really curious to see. Uh, how how Penn State tries to account for some of the guys on the Michigan defense. Yeah, you don't really 
Uh, I think it's going to be a good matchup for them in terms of Maurice Hurst, in terms of Rashawn Gary, and you know Chase yeah. Winovich will be fired up to play. I mean, this is a good Michigan front seven. And the problem is the corners, man. Those yeah. guys can run. They can stay with you. They're not yeah. going to – you know, they're not the kind of guys that lose too many one-on-one battles, and they're not the kind of guys that get lost too often. And Penn State receivers, for better or worse, yeah. have really struggled to create separation yep. more often than not. And I think that's a matchup to, to really keep an eye on here. And I think the other thing is imagine if Penn State had LeBert Hill the very, very good Ooh. Michigan corner that was, uh, you know, possibly going to go to Penn yeah. State. Quinn Nordine, imagine if they had him. He's going to play a factor in this game. I feel well, like I agree with you. Kicker. I feel like I'm with you. I think that it just feels like Quinn Nordine, the, the Penn State decommit, is going to have a say in this game somehow. Yeah. Good or bad. The kid hasn't missed many field goals. He's got a strong leg. Penn State's struggling to make kicks. But what I want, I wanted to dovetail on what you said. I think you're going to find a lot, found, find out a lot about a couple of players on Penn State's offense, the outside receivers, um, Juwan Johnson and Saeed Blacknall. Uh, I don't know about DeAndre Tompkins as much, but those guys are going to have to win one-on-one -on -one outside because I think Michigan is, Michigan's going to play and they're going to kind of force Jasicki and even, even Saquon Barkley to do some things they don't normally do maybe in pass protection because if you leave one of those tackles one-on-one -on -one with Rashawn Gary or – if somehow Maurice Hurst gets singled up on one of the interior linemen, like, you know, Trace McSorley could get hurt. Right. And okay. I, I, it's a very, very real possibility. I think Don Brown, the, the D.C., is going to try and look for those matchups. Yep. I'm sure Joe Moorhead has a plan in place to try and counter that. Penn State's either going to have to throw quick yep. or have some well, well, well schemed plays to get Saquon open. But I think... I think Michigan's going to say, we like our corners. Yep. I know Ohio State's going to do that, and they're going to say, beat us one-on-one -on -one outside. And if you can't, it's gonna, it has to be a low-scoring yeah. game if both teams protect the football. It's going to be a great battle. I'm really looking forward to it. But I, I do find it odd that, I, I mean, the game opened at 12.5. It's down to 8. Yep. That's a lot of points, I think, for Penn State uh, to cover. It leaves the back door open. But, you know, again... If, if if Penn State's up 13 in the fourth quarter and the crowd's roaring, yeah. how and is Michigan that? Has to throw, right? And you know the running game is not really. What are they going to do? Yeah, like but, what what are they going to do? And Penn State can rush the passer too. So yeah, fantastic matchup. And uh, I the one and one one other thing I wanted to touch on on this ride along video. We're finally on 322. That's right. Uh, finally on 322. It's clear, but right. I think that's going to change. We'll see. Um, is the, the, the tone and the mood of James Franklin all week. I remember last year against Ohio State, he was it was I got the sense that it was we're gonna it's gonna take everyone to win this game. We need yep. the crowd to come out, we gotta play great. This is one of the best teams we've played since I've been here. Yep. It it really felt like um, he was sending a message where he thought Penn State could play with Ohio State, but they would need everything to go right. Right. They need all the help they can get. A couple times he said this week that he really thinks Penn State's going to play well tonight. Yeah. And that is, to me, we talk about James Franklin and foreshadowing. Um, I, I think he feels good yeah. about where this team is, and I think he feels very good about the home field advantage and the matchups and, and the fact that Penn State's a more well-rounded team. I, he kind of sets the tone every week, and I was he said it more than once that he expects Penn State to play well. He thought they practiced well, and he usually does not put his foot in his mouth. What do you think? No, I completely agree. If you watched him on college game day this morning, he was very relaxed. Yeah. He was very in control. I think he feels good about where this Penn State team is at right now. I think they feel good about where they're at right now, Bob. I think they're going to play well. To me, it's just a matter of uh, will Michigan look any different on offense? And then B, what are these schemes that you know James Franklin on Wednesday, after practice on Wednesday said, well, we're going to do some things schematically yeah. to try and offset A, Michigan's pressure, and B, the obvious struggle to the offensive line in Big Ten play. What are they? Will they work? And how soon will Penn State be able to do that? I think to me, Bob, the key is as long as they don't get down in the first quarter, uh, as long you know, if, if it's 10-0 after the first quarter, it's up no time uh, if Michigan's leading. But I think as long as they don't let Michigan get into a situation where they can run the ball, chew up the clock, and just beat, you know, pound away, I, I just it's very hard yeah. for me to see Michigan winning this game. But the money coming in says otherwise right now, so we'll see. Yeah, I don't know if it's uh-oh time because, like, let's be honest, they're, they're the number two team in the country. Right. They have been tested once, and that was at Iowa. Um, yes. They were tested a bunch of times last year where the offense had to get it in gear in the second half, including the Ohio State game, a little bit. The offense did a little bit. It was a lot of the special teams. But I, I, I think 10 nothing. I don't think this is going to really rattle 
Penn State, and I think that is why they are equipped to win this game. Because I don't, I don't know that I see a scenario where Michigan gets up 17. Right. Uh, if, it, if it's 10 nothing the other way, I think Michigan's in trouble. But a couple players to watch for me tonight. I, I just feel like Blacknall um, is way too talented of a player to not have an impact in a big game at Penn State this year. He's due. He started against Northwestern. I thought he played okay in that game. I think he's the guy on the outside I'd be looking for. Uh -huh. Also, I'll be very curious to see uh, Michigan's got a very good linebacker. I think his name's Bush, number 10. Yep. Is it Devin Bush? He's really good. Yes. A little bit undersized, but man, is he a great player. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, in a lot of ways, he's their Jabril Peppers a little bit this way uh, this year. I watch. I'm going to watch what they do. What he does with Saquon Barkley. I think it's a great game. It's going to be a hard hitting game. Yes, physical. Uh, a hard hitting game, and uh, like I said, the one thing I think you don't want to see if you're Penn State is Quinn Nordine in the game in yep. the fourth quarter Late. with a 45 yard field goal to tie it or win it. He seems like the kind of kid that's going to come through. Hopefully it won't come to that if you're a Penn State fan. But that's about it for our yep. ride-along video. We're looking forward to the game. We're looking forward to see how it plays out. We're looking forward to getting home to Harrisburg tomorrow to unwind a little bit. But you guys have, great, have a great time tailgating, and we'll see you guys after the game.